Hi everybody, thank you for being here today. Uh, my name is Ken and I will be talking a bit about one of the projects of my PhD. So I want to start talking about many-to-one mapping, uh, which is a concept that tells us that different configurations of the same morphological traits can result in the same functional performance. So this is a concept that is quite well known uh, for people that work with morphology, uh, but something we don't know so well yet is if we can get the same level of functional performance through different combinations of architectural design and the material properties of these morphological traits, like the strength, elasticity, or stiffness. So I'm exploring this idea with Anolis, which is a very diverse group of lizards that have adapted to use very different microhabitats and in consequence have adapted their limb morphology accordingly. So in particular, I will be talking about the femur of anoles. So a femur looks like this, it's like a hollow tube. So it makes sense that we assume for a moment that the femur will behave as a hollow cylinder, a hollow cylinder with that inner radius, outer radius and a height. So once we assume this, it would also make sense to start talking about the properties of a cylinder. For example, let's talk about stiffness. Uh, we can define stiffness as the resistance to deformation in response to an applied force. So if we have a cylinder here and we apply a force to it, uh, this cylinder will lose its shape, at least temporarily, depending on how stiff it is. So we know that stiffness is going to be proportional to this expression here, where L is the length of the cylinder and E is going to represent the influence of material properties and I is going to represent the influence of architectural design. And this is nice because these are actually the two kind of traits we are interested in. So notice that uh, the stiffness will increase together with the product of these two numbers here. So yeah, we know that stiffness is going to be proportional to the product of E and I, but what are actually E and I? So E is the Young's modulus of elasticity, which measures the tensile stiffness of a solid material. And the good thing is that it's going to be proportional to bone mineral density, which we can actually measure. I, on the other hand, is the second moment of area, which measures the efficiency of a shape to resist bending. And it will depend on the cross-sectional shape of a particular object. In the case of a hollow cylinder, it will be, or it can be calculated using this formula here. And since we are talking about shape, we could ask ourselves the question, what shape will give us the higher stiffness, no? So uh, let's imagine these three cylinders or these three cross-sectional shapes of the three cylinders uh, have the same mass and have the same volume. So the shape that will have the higher, uh, the higher level of I is going to be this one here, the shape with the thinner walls. And the reason is because uh, it has a higher uh, value of R. And in this formula here, uh, we will have the, the element, the fourth power of R, which is actually a very big number, or it's a number that will grow very fast with the outer radius. So in short, uh, the shape with the thinner walls is going to give us the higher value of I just because this number here grows very fast. So now we know that stiffness increases uh, both with bone mineral density, which is a measure of E, and also increases with a shape index, uh, which is a measure of I in this case. Uh, so we can draw some lines in this plot. And if you notice, each line here represents a single value of stiffness. This is what is called a, an isocline, in this case, a, a performance isocline. And notice also that uh, the same value of stiffness can be obtained by different combinations of BMD and shape along this isocline. So in the case of many to one mapping, we expect to have a single value of stiffness that is going to be some sort of op optimum value of stiffness and that it can be obtained by different combinations of these two traits. So we will expect different species to fall somewhere along this line. So at this point, we can start asking some questions. First, we could ask how the bone mineral density and shape relate to each other in anodes. Uh, so if we, or in the case of a many to one mapping pattern, we will expect something like this, where BMD and shape are negatively related and we have a stiffness optimum. But of course, we could obtain many other different patterns. We could obtain uh, variable stiffness 
uh, where BMD and shape are positively correlated. We can have uh, variable stiffness, but with constrained bone mineral density. The same here, but with constrained shape. Or we could have a stiffness optimum, but constrained BMD and constrained shape. And we can, of course, we could of course have the just random points in a graph. Uh, so even if we find this uh, negative relationship that will support the uh, a scenario of many to one mapping, we will have to ask ourselves if this relationship represents a performance isoclaim. We will have to test if uh, performance along this isoclaim is actually the same. And even if we test that, we could we can still uh, further ask uh, if natural history could explain why some species are maybe up here in the relationship or down here or why some are closer to this region of the of the plot or this region here. So to try to answer these questions, I use the following methods. And this is going to be a very summarized version of the methods. So uh, I analyzed uh, micro CT scans from about 550 specimens of anoles. I focused on the middle part of the shaft of the femur. I extracted a, a volume and I analyzed it. And after a lot of uh, processing of this data, I managed to obtain an average bone mineral density for that region and an average shape index um, represented by the ratio of the inner radius and the outer radius. So I ended up with a data set of 90 species when considering only males or 71 species when considering only females. So for this uh, presentation, I will show you the results of males because there are more species. Um, for the uh, analysis I perform, I use the phylogeny of anoles from Poet 2017. So for the results, uh, if you remember, the first question was, how do bone mineral density and shape relate to each other in the femurs of anoles? And what I found was this very nice a relatively strong negative relationship between bone mineral density and shape. Uh, so this is very nice because it gives us the first evidence that this might be a case of many to one mapping uh, relating architectural design and material properties. Uh, but we still have to ask if this is actually a performance isocline as we saw before. So yeah, we have to test that. And if we look at the relationship and we color the species based on, the level, on their level of stiffness, where higher stiffness is red, lower stiffness yellow, at first sight we will not see any particular relationship between stiffness and any particular strategy. And we can look at this in a PCA, where we include bone mineral density, shape and stiffness. Uh, we will see that, that BMD and shape are basically represented by PC1, and that stiffness is represented by PC2. Uh, we see that BMD is opposite to shape as in this relationship. And interesting thing is that stiffness is basically orthogonal to this relationship here. This means that stiffness uh, increases in this direction as we would expect in theory. We can also test the, um, the influence of stiffness in the residual variation of this relationship. And I actually found a significant positive uh, effect of stiffness, which means that uh, species that are closer to this region of the relationship show higher, higher stiffness. Uh, finally, we can test for the relationship between stiffness and PC1 scores. Remember that PC1 just represents this, um, this relationship here. And I found uh, no evidence for any relationship between stiffness and any region of this relationship, which is nice because it means that this uh, relationship represents a performance isocline, which in turn supports um, the idea that this might be a many to one mapping pattern uh, between architectural design and material properties. Uh, so now we can ask uh, can, can natural history explain why some species choose some strategies over the others? Uh, so I had a, a couple of options. Now, first, I was asking myself, maybe sexual size dimorphism could, uh, could explain why some species are in different 
or prefer some strategies over others. You know, maybe species where males are more aggressive prefer higher density in their bones or something like that. But I found no evidence for this. So another option was that maybe taxa from islands uh, prefer different strategies than taxa from the mainland. Uh, but I found no evidence for this. So another thing I asked myself was if size could explain the chosen strategy. And when we plot or when uh, we look at the relationship and we color species based on their size, where darker colors are larger sizes, at first sight we see that smaller, smaller species tend to group in this region of the relationship. So we can test that uh, testing for the relationship between PC1 scores and size. Remember that PC1 scores or PC1 represents this relationship here. And I found a significant positive relationship between size and PC1 scores. This basically means that larger species tend to be in this region of the, of the relationship and small, uh, smaller species tend to be here as we saw before. I can also test the, the influence of size on the residual variation of this, of this relationship. And here I found a significant positive relationship, which basically means that, uh, that size, sizes are larger towards this region of the plot, which is interesting because it kind of goes in the same direction as, as stiffness as we saw before. So if we do a PCA and we include uh, BMD shape, stiffness and size, we'll see something similar, that BMD and shape go in opposite directions, but the stiffness and size will be strongly related to each other, and both will be uh, more or less orthogonal to, to this relationship here. So just to finish, I would like to mention some ideas on why size is so important in this universal relationship. So if you remember, uh, we saw that size goes in the same direction as stiffness, and also as we saw before, um, for, for, for femurs that have the same volume and the same mass, the, the shape that, that will give us the higher stiffness or the higher level of eye is going to be the shape uh, that has the thinner walls. Although this is true, in reality, uh, of course, different species will show different uh, bones uh, of different mass, different volumes, different sizes. So the truth is that the the femurs that will show the higher stiffness are just the femurs that are that show the the largest diameters or basically the bones that are the largest. So we also saw that larger species tend to show femurs with lower bone mineral density and thinner walls, uh, and we can explain that in the following way. So here we see that the weight of the femur increases very fast with its size, but the weight will also decrease with the hollowness of the femur. So all species have hollow bones, but why larger species have hollower bones than smaller species? Uh, for many taxa, uh, the femur diameter shows a positive allometry, which means that larger species have proportionally larger diameters than smaller ones. Uh, so this in turn means that the larger species should have proportionally heavier bones. So in this context, it is possible that a, hollow, a hollower shape is a strategy of large lizards to reduce weight. So just to conclude, uh, I show that there is a universal relationship between femur architecture and bone density uh, that as expected from a many-to-one -one mapping pattern, performance is not related to particular strategies and that size seems to explain variability along the performance isocline. So I just want to thank my supervisor, Luke Muller, and the Muller Lab uh, in the University of Toronto for useful discussion in the previous weeks and months. And if you have any questions, you can just write me an email. You can check my webpage uh, if you want to see my other research. Or if you want, you can just follow me on Twitter. Thank you.